Today we're talking about battle ropes. I know you've seen them. If you haven't used them yet, you really need to incorporate them into your training regimen. Battle ropes are a way of combining the two most fundamental aspects of uh, training for combat athletics, which is force production as well as fatigue management. Battle ropes allow you to access both of those and develop them to a very high level. But before you get into ropes, you need to make sure that you're using the best possible kind of ropes. Now, battle ropes are available in two primary uh, materials. The first one is the old traditional manila rope as well as the modern synthetics. And the modern synthetics, from my point of view, really uh, provide the most advantages. Manila ropes are great out of the box because they're very flexible. They give you that broken in feeling right away. They're also very heavy relative to the dimensions of the rope. But from there, the uh, advantages kind of uh, dissipate. If you ever train outside, or even want to have the option of training outside, using a manila rope is a problem because they're very absorbent. So they get wet very easily, even if it's just dew off of the grass. That moisture has a tendency to stay and get absorbed deep into the fibers of the manila rope, which generally leads to mildew and deterioration over time. Your synthetic materials won't do that. They do very well in the out of doors. If they get wet, they just simply dry. You can use them wet, and it's not a big deal. The other issue is almost more of a uh, safety and comfort issue. If you've ever used manila ropes or you remember once upon a time perhaps climbing the old rope in gym class, manila ropes are well known for giving people splinters. That's very distracting and some of those slivers can be difficult to remove. You can use a nylon rope right out of the box. There are no fibers that are going to get into your skin. You can just stay focused on your own comfort and get right to training. The first battle rope exercise we're going to get into today is sort of the fundamental movement of all battle rope training. It's called alternating waves. So Sam is going to demonstrate. The first thing he's going to do is pick up the ends of the rope. He's going to get a grip that's comfortable for him. Some people like to choke up on the ends. Some people like to have a little bit more in case their hands start to slip over time. He's going to check his slack. You want to have just enough play in the rope that you can get your patterns going, but not so much that the patterns sort of fall apart towards the attachment point. He's going to make sure that he's nice and stable, that he's braced and strong for the midsection so that everything is active and engaged in the training process. And alternating waves are very simple. They're just as the name suggests. One rope goes down, the other one comes up, and you continue that uh, cadence until the exercise is complete. And it looks just like this. Now one of the interesting aspects of rope training is that it not only provides strength development, it not only provides conditioning, it actually provides a particular type of stimulus that can make your body smarter because we can introduce a variety of patterns. So the first thing we're going to do now is look at variation one. We've had alternating waves. This next exercise is simply unison waves. We're starting very simple, we're starting basic, and we're just going to keep adding on from there. So as Sam approaches the ropes, he's going to do what he always does. He's going to get his grip. He's going to uh, check the slack on the rope. He's going to get his preferred stance. He's going to make sure that everything is loose and tight, exactly comfortable, just the way that he wants it. And now he's going to perform unison waves and they look like this. As we continue to add to our battle rope movement arsenal, this next variation is a combination of unison wave work as well as alternating patterns within that framework. So we're going to engage the ropes first. Sam's going to grab them, check for slack, check his stance, get in a comfortable position. And what he's going to do this time is he's going to perform four diagonal unison waves, cutting at about a 45 degree angle on one side, and then he's going to switch. Now, the alternating movement is a little bit tricky for him. He also has to count as he performs this exercise. Counting isn't a big deal when you're fresh, but as fatigue sets in, you know, ma managing yourself and, and keeping on track with any exercise is really good training. So unison waves, diagonal angle, 45 degrees, four on each side looks like this.
This next movement in our battle ropes uh, repertoire is going to be our very first combination movement. We're going to use the uh, standard alternating wave pattern, but we're going to add a completely different movement to it that's going to be executed at the same time. So this is an alternating wave with squat. It's going to be a body weight squat, obviously, and because we're squatting, we need to be mindful of using good body mechanics. We don't want to just get sloppy as these movements are sort of uh, combined with one another and fatigue is being generated. So making sure that you have the right stance ahead of time becomes very important. So you may need to be a little wider, a little narrower than normal because you're going to be squatting and everybody has their preferred squat stance. So good body mechanics, make sure that your knees are tracking over your toes, keeping your spine neutral, eyes level, and working a good solid squat at the same time you're keeping all of this going. You're developing your coordination and adding to the conditioning demand of the exercise. So alternating waves with body weight squat. This next movement we're going to add to our battle ropes repertoire takes what we've just done and adds another level of sophistication to it. So we just had our alternating wave pattern that was combined with the body weight squat, which allowed us to not only uh, make the exercise more difficult in terms of fatigue management, but also more difficult in terms of the complexity associated with just performing it. It's more for your brain to monitor and maintain as you're working out. So this next one is going to take that body weight squat and elevate it into the air. We're actually going to come up off the floor. Now we'll call this a jumping squat now, but it's not a big jump. It's not something like a plyo jump or anything like that. We're simply leaving the surface of the floor. So about an inch of altitude is sufficient to meet the criteria for performing this exercise successfully. But even that little bit of jump is going to create much more of a coordination demand as well as a fatigue management demand as you would go through a circuit performing this exercise. So alternating waves with a jumping body weight squat. Everything we've done before, making sure the grip is good, slack is appropriate, body position is good, and set up specifically to make sure that the squats can be performed successfully and comfortably. This next movement that we're going to add for the next layer of our battle rope repertoire is a little bit different. These are called perpendicular waves. And that simply means that we're standing perpendicular to the rope when we do that. Now, because we're doing that, we're going to be working one side of our body at a time. So you have to remember anytime you're doing that, you have to work both sides on an equivalent basis. Now, what's interesting about this particular variation is that it really requires that you get tight with your stance and you brace on one side in particular as you perform the exercise. What's good about that is the carryover it has towards striking, you know, whether you're throwing hands, elbows, what have you. All of those movements are started by contracting one side of the body or the other while you're maintaining a stable platform for delivering that strike. So this exercise is good for sort of duplicating that type of muscular demand. So you're going to hold the ropes, but you're going to hold them differently. When you do the perpendicular waves, it's actually easier to grab them underhand rather than overhand, which we've done on all of the previous drills. So when Sam comes up to the rope, he's going to start first facing away from the camera. He's going to have the underhand grip. He's going to perform some waves, and then he's going to flip over so you can see what it looks like from the other side. Now it's a fact of life that occasionally we're all going to get injured pursuing the sport of our choice. That's uh, very much the case for the combat athlete. So there may be times when you have one arm, one shoulder, one elbow that is completely out of commission. You can still train obviously and you can still use the ropes in order to train. And what's good about that is because sometimes when we're hurt our opportunities to create a fatigue management uh, circumstance to create a cardiovascular demand uh, are, are 
options equipment wise perhaps are limited. So if you have an arm that's completely out of commission, you know, say it's your left arm, you can still perform waves with just one hand. We call these unilateral waves and this works perfectly if you are nursing an injury and it looks like this. We're going to take that last movement, which was really more of a rehab application of working just one limb with the ropes, and we're going to add to it in a way that is for when you're, again, ready for full-on training. And this is uh, not only demanding just in terms of its difficulty, it's demanding because of what your body has to figure out through the course of the exercise. Now this is going to be one limb working the rope at a time, and we're going to load the other limb. Now what that does is that sort of accelerates the asymmetrical bracing, which just basically means you're, you're remaining tight on one side of the body and not the other, which of course is, you know, the key to generating rotary power, which is a big part of throws and grappling, uh, all of your, your punches and your striking arts. So there's a lot of uh, carry over there. And we'll also show a couple of variations. We'll hold the low down low uh, for a few repetitions, and then we'll even uh, press and support it overhead. So there's, even though not a lot of movement taking place, the demands on the musculature and the nervous system to control all of that are considerable and it's going to look like this. This next movement is a new movement per se. The real change is the velocity of the movement. We're going to take what we've already done, the unison rope waves, and we're just going to add altitude to them and force to them. So that what you're getting is more of a resistance training effect. We're actually creating more of a demand on the muscles to raise the rope as high as you possibly can and slam the rope into the floor as hard as you possibly can. If you're going to be using this in a uh, circuit training uh, context, you need to be mindful of how fatigue, how much fatigue comes from doing this. Some people like to save this towards the end of a training session because if you do this really hard and with any real integrity, it's going to be difficult to do anything that requires finesse, particularly technique training, anything like that, after you've done these. So this is what power slams look like. The last movement we're going to show you in this particular training series is an alternating wave pattern, which you're familiar with, but with a level change, which really ups the uh, intensity of the exercise, not so much because it's that much more physically difficult, but it's more of a processing problem for you. You have to keep that pattern going. You've got to keep your eyes towards the opponent, if you will, and you have to navigate moving from a standing position to a kneeling position, back to a standing position, kneeling position, uh, over and over until the exercise is complete, all while maintaining a good, smooth, rhythmic wave pattern. So we're also, in a, again, not just training your ability to generate force, not just training your ability to overcome fatigue, durational training, we're also adding to the complexity of your training so that there's more problem solving taking place. All of these things are a really big part of the combat athlete's repertoire. Now that we've come to the end of our training series, hopefully you understand just how effective battle ropes can be and how much variety they can provide your training regimen. It's not often that you can find a training tool that allows you to combine resistance training with fatigue management training so that you really get that, that force output combined with the durational aspect all from one training modality. These ropes work very well. They can take anything that you can dish out. You saw Sam work them pretty doggone hard today. Now, understand, we're not just training attributes, we're also training skills that tie into those attributes. You think about your ability to maintain a tight posture, generate force that initiates on one side of the body and then is delivered in the form of a strike, in the form of a takedown. There's so much about rope training that is so applicable to the combat athlete. We really encourage you to uh, give these exercises a try, come up with your own exercises. Let us know if you have any questions. Stay tuned for our next training series.